This is a Ford Cougar, and if you're thinking about buying one, this is the one video that you definitely need to watch because I'm gonna go over all the common problems, show you everything that you need to check in order for you to go out there and find the best example possible. Let's go. So to kick off, we don't normally do this, but let's jump straight in and start talking about the gearbox because unfortunately, there is some horrific issues out there, only with certain gearboxes. So throughout the Mark II Cougar's life, there was always a good old manual gearbox available, and quite honestly, it's hard to go wrong with one of these. They don't tend to have many problems. The automatics, however, hmm, well this is where things get a little bit more dicey. Let's start with the good news, and that is if you're looking at a petal-powered Mark II Cougar, you're going to get the 6F35 gearbox. Fancy name, but it basically just means it's an old-school torque converter gearbox. Proven technology, they just tend to work pretty well. So throughout the entire history of this channel, throughout all the time and all the cars that I've presented on this channel, I've never once said to completely avoid a certain car, but there's a first time for everything and here it comes. Take this as a warning, do not buy a second generation pre-facelift Cougar that has that power shift gearbox. The design was absolutely terrible. What would happen is there's plastic retainers inside that gearbox. These would fatigue, they would break off, they would then get chewed up by the gearbox. That gearbox would need to be removed, completely stripped, all the parts replaced, and the entire gearbox flushed out. And unfortunately, this wasn't a case of if it would happen, it was a question of when it was gonna happen. And when it would happen, well, we've seen them fail as early as 15,000 miles. Now, thankfully, in 2016, when the facelift Cougar came out, just like this one, Ford realized the error of their ways and completely changed how that gearbox worked. So if you've got it coupled to that 180 brake horsepower engine and a facelift, you'll be absolutely fine. You've been warned, I've probably been cancelled or sued by Ford at this point, so give a guy a subscribe and a like to help me along my way. <laughs> So engines, let's start talking about them. Now in the car, just a moment ago, I hinted towards the facelift in 2016. So let's clarify what that actually changed. So in 2016, the Mark II became the Mark 2.5. It got some visual upgrades, the changes to that god awful power shift gearbox, and all the engines got a bit more power as well. Now thankfully, there aren't really any significant engine problems to speak of with this range. So just look for one that's had all the services when they were meant to happen. It's also worth being aware that a lot of these are approaching time for a timing belt change. That's a 450 pound job, so make sure you factor that into the bargain, maybe save a little bit of money back for yourself. The interval on that is either 10 years or 100,000 miles, and if you're not sure if the engine that you're looking at has got a timing belt or chain, drop a comment below and we can come back and help you out with that. Oh, and one last problem. I know I said there was no problems, but this is a tiny little thing. The dipstick could tend to snap as well. So check that's not the case on the one that you're looking at. So obviously it goes without saying, you're gonna check the bodywork for any signs of iffy looking repairs and of course any damage. But one other thing to remember on this type of car is have a look underneath it for any owners that have maybe got a bit too zealous with the off-roading and their SUV crossover. So next up, we're gonna go into a problem that unfortunately is becoming quite prevalent on these Cougars as they get older. But before we get there, I wanted to give a quick shout out to Crookies Customs. They've made it possible for us to have this car and make this buyer's guide. Now, based in Cumbernauld in central Scotland, these are the go-to guys if you want any vehicle customization done, be it window tinting, decals, or even paint correction now as well. I'm gonna add all the details in the description below, so give these guys a check out if you're looking to get anything done. So next problem, there has been the occasional report of rear differentials starting to fail. What happens is they'll start to leak and then that lack of oil will cause the bearings inside to go bad. So listen out for a quite distinct metallic grinding noise on that test drive. We'll get on to test driving this one soon, so stay tuned for that. Now, there's a second part to this problem because savvy sellers will try this. We have seen this happen as well. They'll remove the prop shafts 
from the rear wheels and that way the rear differential isn't actually doing anything so you think you're buying an all-wheel drive Cougar you're actually buying a front wheel drive Cougar so get down here I know it's a bit unpleasant especially if it's a Scottish winter and grubby floors but get under there and have a look make sure the prop shafts there make sure the drive shafts are on the rear wheels so next up and this is a great area to negotiate a bit of money off the car Go and negotiate that bit of money off then let me know you need the how to to fix this problem because it's really quite easy and it is wetness and dampness getting into this boot floor now bear in mind there is a rubber boot liner in here you need to get beneath that rubber boot liner to really check if there's any dampness in there good luck Final problem before we get out on that test drive, and that is the keyless entry. If you're lucky enough to be looking at a Cougar that's got keyless entry, make sure it works. And try unlocking the driver's door and the passenger door independently. It can have a bit of a mind of its own, and it requires the door handle assembly to be replaced, and that needs to be painted and all sorts, so it does cost a bit of money. Also, worth being aware, on these Cougars, just like the Focuses, they're pretty prevalent for thieves mimicking the signal, getting access to the car and taking it away. So if you're going to be parking in a less than desirable area, let's say, you might want to consider some extra security as well. So you join us on that test drive then, and I really do hope the car that you're looking at is as good as this one. It's nothing worse going to see a car, and it just isn't as described. But what we've got here, this is an ST line, absolutely beautiful example. So yeah, I really do hope it drives just as good as this one for you. First thing to look out for, particularly on those diesels, some of these diesel engines are shared with the Mondeos, a lot of them use as taxis and stuff, and as those miles start to rack up, the water pumps can fail. It's quite an unusual failure, it's the actual blades on the little impeller that drives the water pump that can wear away, and then it starts to creep up in temperature terms. A lot of people will misdiagnose that as a faulty thermostat, but usually it's the water pump itself, so keep an eye on that temperature gauge right through your test drive. Next up, now I know I said back at the garage that they don't really have any engine problems. Now what I'm going to mention here isn't specific to the Cougar, it's specific to a lot of diesels out there and that is the DPF, the diesel particulate filter. Now these can get blocked and that's particularly the case on cars that have lived a life doing pretty short journeys. They can choke up and it can be expensive to rectify. So make sure all the performance is there and there's no errors or anything shown on the dash and you should be okay. So before you finish that test drive up, try and find yourself a junction or a little abandoned car park or something like we've got here and do a couple of tight manoeuvres. Get the car into reverse, get it going forward and what we're doing here is we're putting a bit of strain on both the front and rear if it's an all-wheel drive Cougar differentials. Listen out for any groaning, any unusual wheel skip, anything like that could suggest problems. And there you go. You've now got all the tips that you need to go off and find yourself a brilliant Ford Cougar. But don't click off this video yet. Hang on and see how it scores on our reliability leaderboard. So how do we score the Mark II and 2.5 Ford Cougar on a reliability leaderboard? Well, overall, these are really sturdy cars. A warning once again, please do avoid that awful power shift gearbox in the early diesels and you'll do okay. If you do that, we score it a pretty massive 7.5 out of 10. Now, thank you so much for watching. Do hit that subscribe button, give this video a like, and we'll see you for the next one.